Bitcoin rejected the big 67k range point of control. Are we going to see new loads to be made? Are we going to see a big move to the downside? Or can we look for higher prices to come? I am Coach Severin, one of the coaches here at Chart Champions, and today I want to give you my perspective on Bitcoin as well as Ethereum and also one more altcoin I previously analyzed in one of my altcoin weekly updates. So let's start by looking at Bitcoin and yeah, what we can see here is that this was the 67,000 range point of control and we can see price had a really nice rejection at this area of almost 6%. So yeah, it is 6% and this was not the only confluence. It was also an anchored view up from the all time high to current price action. So this is a really important area, but what can we expect next? So for this, we obviously have to put on a little bit more technical analysis and look for the best areas in this chart. So the way I like to do my analysis is always split my chart into ranges. So if we look at this from current all time high, which is around 74,000, and this range low down here sitting around 58,600, we are simply trading in a larger range. Okay, okay, so what we can see here is this range point of control was lining up with the middle of the range. And um, yeah, this is where we saw a bit of a rejection. But if I look at the lower time frames, this is not too helpful for me yet. Okay, so what I'm definitely going to do is mark out the range low because this is a very key level for me. I'm going to mark this out as a potential SFP level. And the reason for this is that I don't really like the structure we are seeing down here. So if we think about this in terms of a market maker perspective, we know that there are a lot of stop losses and with that a lot of liquidity resting below the 58,600 area. So if we think about traders who did take some long trades within this range here, the most obvious place for them to leave their stop loss is below this low. And this naturally is a really nice place for a liquidity grab. So down here, there are two scenarios I'm looking at. So one is the potential of a simple SFP down here, where we see the move below the range low with a, in my opinion, the best time frame for this uh, trade would be the four hour time frame. If we simply get a four hour close above, this is where I myself am looking for a long trade. Another scenario which I myself would even prefer is to break below this level, spend some time down here, attract new traders down here, opening new short trades. So for this, we can then head over to order flow and check the order flow if we actually get new shorts opening down here, followed by a reclaim. So this is called a failed auction. So what I'm looking at is either an SFP of the range low or a failed auction. If you are, like myself, more of a conservative trader, I like to pair a failed auction with a confirmed market structure change. So what that means is I want to see a higher high being formed, followed by a higher low, followed by another higher high. So this for me would be a nice confirmation that we indeed saw a, a new low being formed down here. Okay, at the time I obviously need to read order flow to see what's going on down here and if I actually want to take this trade or not. Okay, so we can also have a look at the more local time frame here and if we split this larger range into another range, we can see that we are simply in a smaller range. Okay, so yesterday we did see a move into this smaller range point of control. So if you are more focused on the day trades and the scalp trades, this is obviously an acceptable long trade if there is additional confluence. And yesterday we did have some nice confluence with the range value area low. So we can already identify that this is a very key level. We do have the smaller range uh, middle of the channel, we do have the range value area low 
And we have to keep the context in mind that we do have some unfinished lows. This was also a naked point of control. And what that means is that this area here at, call it 63,000 area, is very important on Bitcoin. And if you break down below this level again, potentially even see a retest of this value area low, there is an increased probability for me to see the move into this range low. Now, as traders, we shouldn't get fearful or we shouldn't get depressed if we see the move into the range low and actually look at this as a really nice opportunity. Okay, so this is what I'm looking at on Bitcoin here in terms of the long trades. For me, there is nothing I want to do here on the local time frames. Okay, I'm not interested in this long trade at the moment. In my opinion, yesterday it was acceptable, but I wouldn't jump into a trade here. So I simply remain patient and wait for my bigger levels to be hit. In terms of resistance, what we would naturally look at, okay, so if this value area low is holding as support, we can look at a value area rotation, okay, so from the theory, we would look from a move, for a move from the value area low into the point of control. If the point of control is claimed, we would look for the range value area high. Now. This doesn't mean that it's just going to shoot up from here and we can simply target the range value area high. Okay, so we as traders have to be aware of resistances in between. And there's one level I'm keeping an eye on to at least check the reaction, which is this weekly naked point of control at 69,150. Okay, so I like this level because it's also lining up with the dot seven five pulled from this local high to this local low. So I myself always like to check the Fibonacci levels and my preferred FIB level is actually the 7.5 as well as the .25. So what we can see down here is if we simply split this into 25% quartiles here, we can see the lower 25 was really well respected on this bounce as well. And what we see very often is that we do get a good reaction on the .75. So this is something where I'm at least placing an alert and checking the reaction. In my opinion, this trade has already played out. Okay, so there's no short trade I want to take inside here. And I simply have to remain patient for two areas I'm interested in. This is my first area of resistance. And this to the downside is my first area of support. Now, if you say this is too much of the higher time frame stuff, there's obviously a lot of potential to trade the lower time frames as well. For this, we can utilize order flow. We can have a look at the lower time frames as well. I'm not going to go too de deep into the lower time frames in this video, but we can see I just created this new crypto all in one template for Atas. And what I can see here is actually two nice levels on the intraday to look for the scalp trades. Okay, previous day high lining up with the weekly view up. This is a bit of the more advanced stuff, but this is something or this is a level you want to keep on if you are scalp trading as well as this previous day value area low because we are attempting a local market structure change. Okay, not going to go too deep into this one, but that is just a sneak peek of what's possible and how we are looking at the lower time frames. If there is demand, we can obviously focus on lower time frame trades as well in future videos. So just let us know if you like the lower time frames or if you are more focused on the higher time frames anyway. But as promised, I also want to have a look at Ethereum. And Ethereum does look a bit different compared to the ES, uh, not the ES, compared to Bitcoin. I was already thinking about the futures, but no, that is crypto. So here we can see after forming this um, yearly high price did change local market structure. Okay, so this is looking a bit weaker compared to the Bitcoin chart because what we can see here is that is our yearly high. We then came back down for a lower low. We saw another rise to the upside forming a lower high and we then saw another lower low. So this is what I would classify as a confirmed market structure change. So now it is important for us to know, is Ethereum actually heading down much lower or where are we going next? So 
there is one thing we have to be aware of and this is something I was yeah already showing to the member members I think almost a year ago okay so I've been trading this pitchfork for a long time okay so what we can see here is for me to validate the pitchfork I need to see the respect of the middle of the pitchfork as well as the bottom of the pitchfork okay so here we can see the middle of the pitchfork was really well respected we had a yeah, it was almost acting like a supply and demand area so simple support and resistance okay so this low down here where I actually secured a really nice swing long trade I'm still holding on ethereum this was a perfect touch of the pitchfork low okay we then saw a nice rise to the upside rejecting the middle of the pitchfork again this acted as a nice resistance into support flip into what level exactly into the high of the pitchfork for a perfect rejection here but what we simply did was retest the middle of the pitchfork and this for me was the the sign to place another swing long trade on ethereum after seeing strength okay so this is where i'm also holding a swing long trade on ethereum here we can see price did break out of this pitchfork and what we simply did on this move to the downside for now is retesting the top of the pitchfork okay so this is already going to be a very key level on ethereum this was not the only confluence. We also had a nice anchored view up lining up with this level. So what I always like to do on uptrends is draw a pitchfork and not, not a pitchfork, an anchored view up from the start of this uptrend. Okay, here we can see this anchored view up was acting as support once, twice, and here we retested it again. So this was obviously something I prepared myself for. I was giving this in one of my altcoin streams and I secured a nice long trade down here, which I'm also still holding. So here we can see my long trade on Ethereum had an average entry of 2,882. Okay, so we did see a nice bounce from this area, but now it's really important to know what is happening next so do i want to hold on to this trade am i expecting to get stopped out of this trade or am i even expecting new highs so let's go to the lower time frames first okay and something to be aware of is that on this trade i obviously um, hit a take profit one already so this already is a risk-free trade okay but what i'm looking at here is this bigger range okay so we can simply draw a fixed range for this entire range here we can see currently finding support around the value area low okay so what you really don't want to see is another test of this value area low because this would in my opinion increase the likelihood of taking out this range low again and this is where we then have to be at our PCs and see are we actually starting to close candles back inside this very well respected pitchfork or are we simply ending in another SFP for another leg to the upside. So this is something to be aware of. Okay. So if we look at the local time frames here, actually this is too local. I want to start with this first okay we can see this previous range we had formed here was already lost okay so the way i like to trade altcoins and what's working really well for me is to always look at previous range value area lows and look for the reclaims okay so here for the long trade i'm currently holding i need to see one key area being claimed okay this is the previous range value area low around 3330 as well as the series of unfinished highs okay so this area is going to be very key and what i'm going to see here is if we actually claim this area because if that is the case i can expect higher prices on ethereum and in my opinion i would actually target these highs to be taken Okay, these highs at 3,750, call it 50. 
okay? But we first need to claim this local resistance, okay? So, this is what I'm looking at next. I'm not really focused on these intraday levels here um, above price. So, for me, I need to see this or I want to see these unfinished highs being taken. This resistance up here I already showed you is also in confluence with the daily level. So, definitely something to be aware of. Yesterday, I actually gave a long trade in one of my altcoin streams. So this is for the local price action here. Okay, so let's have a look at this one as well. And what I was looking at here was the range point of control of this more local range. Okay, so in my opinion, this is a very key le level similar to what I explained on Bitcoin. And this was the long trade yesterday. Okay, so we do have a daily. There is also a naked point of control as well as the range point of control. Okay, and the reason I'm looking for this long trade is because really I feel that this is the last support here. Okay, if we lose this area, I wouldn't be surprised to see this range low being taken. Now, the context of this long trade was that we attempted to change market structure on the medium term time frame. Okay, we can see we did break above these previous highs. We did make a new higher high and this is the higher low on a bit of a supply and demand flip. And I want to see this area act as support to target this 3300 area. Okay, we obviously don't have to get this, but in my opinion, this is the one and only support I'm looking at or I'm interested in here. If this is lost, my next area is going to be the range low. I'm not really focused on any levels inside here because I simply don't like the confluence. Something else I liked about this trade is that it was also the anchored VWAP pulled from this local low. Okay, so um, it's going to be a make or break moment here for Ethereum and I'm going to monitor this. I didn't take this trade myself because I already secured myself the long, long trade from lower, which was also according to one of my setups in the weekly altcoin streams. So what you can do in these altcoin streams is request an altcoin. You can request your favorite altcoin. You can tag me in the chat and I am going to analyze this altcoin, whatever it is, and present you with a setup I um, am interested in on this coin. What you can also do is request a coin during my live stream. So while I'm live streaming, I'm looking at the chat and if you have any altcoin you want me to chart, I'm going to do this live in the time. The reason behind this is that you can see how my thought process is going while I'm looking at a brand new chart. Okay, so here on ONDO, this was a coin that was requested during one of my streams. So if we look at this, during the stream, I was looking at a area of support down here and an area of resistance up here. So what's really beneficial um, of these life in time analysis is how my brain works. So I was identifying this right here as a range and I was looking at a fixed range profile and I was looking at confluences for the value area low and confluences for the value area high. So we can see both of my predictions played out really well. So we can see from my area down here, we saw an increase of almost 30%. And from this area up here, we had a rejection of already 13%. So I myself secured a nice short trade up here. You can see on ONDO, the average entry price 0.88. So this one played out really well. And if you are interested in me covering your favorite altcoins, you know where to find it. Head over to chartchampions.com. This is our website. You can also check the previous altcoin streams I did. If you simply go over to the video library, you can see the daily updates, container sessions, and down here you can see all of the altcoin setups I ever gave to the community. And yeah, let me tell you, they played out really well so far. So um, I'm sure you're going to enjoy them. So see you over there and see you next time. Goodbye.